Today we're going to be doing the full review of the Kumbacam 3 axis Smartphone Stabilizer. If you remember, I did the unboxing of this last week. If you haven't seen that yet, links to that down in the video description. I'll just go ahead and mention this before I get started. Kumbacam is sponsoring this video, but as you'll see from my review, the thoughts and opinions that I express here are my own, so let's just go ahead and get started. This stabilizer is designed to work with just about any of the current smartphones out on the market. I haven't tested it with any of these 6 or 7 inch phones yet, I don't think it's going to work with those, but with a 5.5 inch phone it works just fine. With a a little bit of extra wiggle room to it, so a 6 inch might actually work with it. And if the phone that you're using with it is just a little bit too heavy for it and it starts to sag, there's actually an included weight you can screw into this end to help balance things out. So far I've only needed that weight when I was trying to stabilize the OnePlus One with an included case on it, so that says a lot. I'll walk through the initial setup process in the unboxing video as well, so you can see that over there, but it is extremely simple. But once you get it going, there are three different modes. Heading follow mode, which is the default, in this mode, the camera will smoothly follow wherever you move the handle, and you can do up and down panning using the top and bottom buttons. Other than that, it's going to try to attempt to keep it pointing straight out at whatever you point it at. This is a really good general mode, I've spent most of my time using that. If you press the mode button one time, it goes into heading mode, where it attempts to lock on to something out in front of it and keep it pointed at that thing, which means you can move around, you can actually move the entire stabilizer, and the camera will attempt to stay where it is. This mode seems like it would be best in an interview situation where the subject is standing still, or if you wanted to maybe move around an object if you were getting b-roll of a phone or something. In this mode, the up and down buttons still pan the phone up and down as well. And if you press mode once again, you get back to the default mode. Then if you press the mode button twice quickly, you enter the third mode, locking mode, where the stabilizer does its best to try to keep the phone pointing in a straight line out from this motor. So if you look down with the motor, it looks down. If you look up, it looks up. If you look left, it looks left and right, and it tries to do it all smoothly. The up and down buttons in this mode tilt the camera to the left and to the right, which is a little bit odd, but it could actually make for a really neat effect. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, there's one LED light on the device. It lets you know the status of the device and the charge of the batteries all the time. When it's flashing four times in a row, it means it's 100% charged, three flashes is 75%, two flashes is 50%, one flash is 25%. In my usage, since I'm using heavier phones, I did try to keep it at 100% charge as much as possible because when the batteries do get lower, it's possible that the device can make it sag just a little bit, but not quite enough that you'd want to use the weight. However, it is supposed to last anywhere from three to seven hours on a charge. I would assume that that large time difference would depend on the weight of the phone that you're trying to stabilize and just how much work the stabilizer is having to do, how fast you're moving it around, and how much the motors are having to work. But the really nice thing about this, it takes standard 18350 batteries, unlike a lot of others. And since it comes with a little USB power charger, you could take a spare set of batteries with you if you're going to a shoot or something. You could swap out the batteries after a couple of hours and be charging your other set of batteries up with a USB battery pack. Now, as far as the build quality and the weight of this device, it is solid as a rock. Basically, everything on it is made out of metal, except for the buttons and the little cell phone holder at the top. And because of that, it does have quite a bit of heft to it. The documentation says it's 361 grams without a phone and without the batteries installed which is about twice as much as a phone itself would weigh. So even though I say it's got some heft to it, it's still not terribly heavy. I can hold it up with two fingers, no problem. And it does have enough weight to it to help keep things balanced. And really, I guess the only other thing to do at this point is just show you some of the footage that I've captured with it. I've tried my best to put this thing through its paces over the last week, and I still don't think that I've really done it justice. I've had several people ask me to test out different phones with it, and I'll just go ahead and say it. While this will make your footage look amazingly stable, it's not going to fix a bad camera. So I spent the majority of my time with it filming with the Galaxy S6 and the LG G4, but I did test out the Asus Zenfone and I tested out the Elephone P7000, and while it did help stabilize those phones, it did make the footage a little bit better. It didn't do anything for the video quality, obviously, so it's kind of a, a mixed bag there. Anyway, back to the subject at hand, what I really enjoyed about using this was that I could film at 1080p 60 frames per second using the Galaxy S6. Normally with the S6, you can't stabilize 60 frames per second video but with this I could, and it is beautiful. I did some comparisons with the S6, as you can see here. First, I just walked with the device, doing 1080p, 60 frames per second, no stabilization turned on at all on the device. Then I tried it at 1080p, 30 frames per second, with stabilization turned on in the camera. And then you've got me walking with it at 1080p, 60 frames per second, using the Goomba Cam. Now that is a difference there. But I'll go one further. I ran with this thing. I'm definitely not as fast as I used to be, but I tried jogging with this thing up and down the street and then over at the local soccer field. And just tell me that that footage isn't still beautiful and usable. You could even sort of film a, a first person horror film with this, like the tickle monster trying to get my son like I've done here. But you know what? 
I took it even one step further. Yeah, I went there. I sprinted with this thing. I can't run very far, but I'll say it. I was booking it across that soccer field. I was running along as fast as I could go while I was still holding the camera out in front of me. I won't say that the footage I got was terribly usable, but honestly, it was a whole lot more stable than it would have been if I hadn't been using a stabilizer. The rest of the time that I spent with the Kumba Cam was doing more practical things. I filmed a ridiculous amount of B-roll footage for the upcoming Parrot Jumping Sumo review I'm gonna be doing. You will see a ton more of it when that video comes out, and I'll make sure to link to it down below, so be on the lookout for that. But as you can see, I was able to run alongside the Parrot Sumo while I drove it with my other hand. So I was operating the camera, driving the jumping sumo, and running all at the same time, and the footage still turned out great. I also used it to capture footage of my son shooting basketball and kicking the soccer ball around, and then I got curious. Could a kid use it? I set everything up, I hit the record button on the S6, and then I got out in front of the camera, and well, you can see for yourself. Pay no attention to the subject of the video or how terrible I am at soccer. Just look at how smooth that footage is. And it was shot by a six-year-old that has never held a camera before in his life. I think at that point it just speaks for itself. So let's get down to brass tacks. This stabilizer retails for almost 400 bucks. At the time of filming this though, it's available on Amazon for $300, which is a really nice discount. But who is this designed for? Is this a glorified selfie stick? For 300 bucks? No. At that price point, and given the absolutely humongous level of stabilization you get with this, this is clearly designed for an entry-level filmmaker. This is for somebody that has a very nice cell phone that does decent video, but it's a little too shaky for the type of footage they want to capture. This is for a parent that wants to capture super stable footage of their kid's piano recital. This is for an aspiring YouTuber who can't afford a thousand dollar camera, but has a nice cell phone already and just needs something to make it more steady. This is definitely not for everyone, but I have to say it, this is for me. Unfortunately, I do have to return this since it is just a review unit, but I'm gonna see what I can do to try to get one for myself because I honestly, seriously love this thing. I will of course have links down in the video description to where you can pick one up over on Amazon if you're, like I said, the type of person that this is targeted toward. Thanks again to KumbaCam for sending this out for review. Hopefully I will have one of these before too much longer that I can use for B-roll moving forward. Also thanks to KumbaCam for sponsoring this video. Also thanks to you guys for watching. Remember to give a thumbs up down below if you like this video and subscribe to receive more videos when they become available, and I will see you again next time.